How's it going everybody, Jordan here, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over my King Robert Baratheon build for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you weren't aware, Robert Baratheon is my favorite character from the Game of Thrones TV show, which just wrapped up a few weeks ago, and I thought I'd make this build for the other Game of Thrones fans. But don't worry, if you aren't a fan, that's totally okay, because this build I'll be going over today is a heavy blunt fire warrior build that packs a huge punch, so if that's something you're interested in and keep watching the video. As always, if you enjoy this video, remember to leave a like. Also, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments or you can always join our awesome Discord if no one's replied and I'm sure someone will be willing to help you out with that. Alright, let's get right into it. Robert Baratheon, before the Robert we knew on the show, was the leader of his own rebellion against the Mad King. He was infamous for his war hammer and dominance on the battlefield. I knocked him down with a hammer. God! I was strong then. As well as his affection for the ladies. Thank the gods for Bessie and her tits. In order to capture that essence, I decided to make a Warhammer focused build. The hard part about a hammer build is the fact that they have the slowest attack speed in the entire game and leave you open to many hits. And if you aren't perfect at dodging, parrying, or waiting to attack at the right moment, you are going to take hits. So finding a balance of trying to increase the attack speed of the hammer while also making this build tanky enough to take hits was a challenge. I was able to solve both those problems though by a few things. The first was to use melee charging speed and rely on the charged heavy attack of the melee blunts. When matched with fire, the single charged heavy attack of the hammer can destroy any enemy very quickly and is honestly a better choice to use than regular light or heavy attacks with the hammer. You can repeat these heavy attacks rather quickly and smash your enemies. In order to solve the tankiness, I relied on one tanky perk, which was the chance to ignore half damage perk. Which again, if you weren't aware, it reduces all incoming damage by half, making it probably the best tank perk in the game. This is just enough to be able to take a few hits and re-heal without being one-shotted on the battlefield on Nightmare. I didn't put any more points into tankiness because I wanted the rest to be put onto fire damage. Now, Robert wasn't known for lighting his hammer on fire, but I couldn't make another build without elemental damage. Fire damage is great for increasing your melee damage and goes really well with the hammer. Alright, let's get right into the gear. So, our primary weapon is going to be a legendary item from the Helix store. Now, it has been in the Oiko store a few times, I think at least once. I could have sworn it was there twice, but anyways, it's going to be the Hammer of Horns. Uh, this has warrior damage, damage with heavy blunts, elemental damage but minus 30% elemental resistance, and then I engraved it with fire damage. Now, quickly why I picked this weapon is because that legendary engraving of 30% elemental damage applies to both fire and poison. So this one weapon gives us 70% fire damage plus the 30% damage with heavy blunts making this one weapon give us 100% melee damage from the single weapon. For the secondary weapon, we're going to go with a regular warrior damage, fire damage, damage with heavy blunt weapons, and crit damage. For our bow, we're going to want to put warrior damage, crit chance, fire damage again, and then engrave the melee charging speed here again for that quick melee attack. On the armor side of things, this is where we get part tankiness. We have warrior damage, chance to ignore half damage, crit chance at full health, and fire damage all on your helmet. For the gauntlets, we have warrior, crit damage, crit chance, and then crit damage while at full health. Again, it's important to put out that you don't need to engrave that just as long as it has two of those perks on it, you can engrave the third. For the chest, we have warrior damage, crit damage, elemental resistance to counteract the negative elemental resistance of the hammer of horns, and then we engrave damage with heavy blunt weapons. For the waist, we have warrior damage, chance to ignore half damage again, 100% crit damage at full health, and then crit chance on the waist. Finally, for the boots, we have warrior damage, crit chance at full health, 
crit damage while at full health, and then we finally engrave fire damage on the boots. Alright, let's look at the warrior abilities. Obviously, the primary one is going to be charged heavy attack, and then after that, our primary ability is going to be flaming attacks. So we want to turn this on whenever we want to hit people extremely hard. Our secondary ability is going to be Battle Cry of Ares. Again, you're not the tankiest build in the game with this, but having Battle Cry of Ares gives you that additional 50% damage and prevents you from dying. It's very useful in conquest battles. And then our third ability is going to be Ring of Chaos. It's really good at knocking people down. And once they're on the ground, it's really easy to hit them with a charged heavy attack and kill them really quickly. And then lastly, we're going to put the health of Second Wind on here. When you get hit, you need to stay at full health for that high crit chance and crit damage, so hitting the health before you attack someone if you've taken damage is always extremely useful. Alright, let's look at the masteries. Again, if you don't have all the ability points that I do, just focus on the primary ones that I mentioned, and you can always put more into them depending on how many extra you have. Now, if you want a 100% crit chance with this build, you're going to have to put 20 points into crit chance here in the hunter category, and then 20 points on the crit chance while at full health on the assassin side. If you do this, you'll have a 100% crit chance with this build. Secondly, you're gonna wanna put 20 points into chance to ignore half damage on the assassin tree as well for a full 100% chance to ignore half damage. After that, if you want more melee charging speed and hit quicker, you can always put a full 20 into the melee charging speed on the warrior, but that's definitely not required. After that, you're gonna wanna put points into damage with heavy blunts, fire damage, crit damage while at full health, damage while at full health, and then the rest of your points can be put into tanky or augmented kind of masteries like elemental resistance, warrior damage, health, armor, and melee resistance, damage dealt restored as health, crit damage, and finally range resistance. So a lot of those that I put in towards the end are very much additional ones that you can kind of stack on, but focus on the crit chance at full health and regular crit chance for 100% crit chance build. All right, let's look at the stats for this build. As always, in the description of this video or in a card on the video, you will find a link to the builds.ac website that has all these stats and gear so that you can look at it on your desktop or on your mobile phone uh, so you don't have to pause the video or anything. But again, the primary focus is if we look at the critical modifiers, we're able to hit 100% crit chance with this build and deal 617% damage when we are critting. And then on top of that, we're we're dealing a 286% fire damage with those crits and then stack the damage with heavy blunt weapons on there plus the warrior damage and you're dealing a significant chunk of damage to the enemies. Lastly we'll just look at the tanky side of things The because of the hammer of horns but the counteracting of the elemental resistance on the chest we only have a minus 1% elemental resistance which is fine but we do have a bit of a health and armor bonuses from the mass masteries and the passives from the ability tree, but mainly we have a 100% chance to cut all damage we receive in half, which is more than enough to feel somewhat tanky to be able to take on enemies. Lastly, let's look at the transmog for this build. I did really design it to look like Robert Baratheon as best as I could. So for your primary weapon, you're probably going to want to go with the hammer of Jason. He had a very war hammery kind of hammer in the way that it was described by George R. R. Martin. And this to me is the most hammery of the hammers out there. And that's why I picked it. For the helmet, they don't really have a helmet with antlers coming out of it, which would be ideal. But the closest one I could find is the adorned silver crescent helmet, which I think looks pretty good. For the gauntlets, it's going to be the plated copper variation of the heavy Athenian bracers. For the chest, go find the breastplate stretcher. Now! We're going to use the heavy leather chest plate, the decorated bronze version. For the waist, we're going to use the Athenian Tacits, the plated copper version. And then lastly, for the boots, we have Spartan Greaves, and I'm using the plated copper version of that as well. 
So I hope you enjoyed that build. It's definitely for the players looking to use a warrior hammer but don't want to feel very slow. Also for the Game of Thrones fans looking to change up their playstyles in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Thanks again and as always if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments or join our discord and one of us should be able to answer one of your questions. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you guys next time. So proud of those born to be strong.